Welcome to Worship with Wesley United Methodist Church, based here in Yakima, Washington. My name is Shane, and I am the pastor of this amazing, wonderful congregation. Today, I am preaching, and we are leading worship from the sanctuary. As we, this service, are celebrating All Saints Day, that day in the church where we honor those who have passed in the last year, but we also remember about the saints in our own lives who have taught us what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We have a great worship service planned for you today. We will pray together, we will sing, we'll hear scripture and a message, and we will take time to honor those who have passed. We invite you to continue along with us in this worship. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. They are gathered around you, God of forever and ever. Some are well known, like Martin Luther, Mother Teresa, C.S. Lewis, Helen Keller, and so many more. Some have been forgotten, like Agnes and Chad, Damien, Mother of Egypt, and Claire, while others have days named after them. But many are ordinary folks, such as the teachers from second grade, who guided our fingers under the words, the nurse in the hospital who held our hand while blood was taken, the coach who trusted us with the ball, not the end of the bench. There is an old man who left retirement behind and a barren woman who left at her promise. These are popes, princes, and power brokers who are taught heaven's hymns by the pulpers, pretenders, there are those who moved mountains and those who murmured in the wilderness. There are those who founded the church and those who floundered on the waves of Galilee. All saints, just like us, singing your praise forever and ever. Amen.
1 through 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around us, around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good things. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. I love tradition. There's something amazing about being a part of a community and being part of its traditions. And for me, when I move to a new community, there's something about learning a community's traditions. But I don't love tradition just for tradition's sake. Tradition helps connect me to the past, that which has come before me. Or as Tevye in one of the great musicals, Fiddler on the Roof, says, because of our traditions, everyone knows who he is. The thing is, we don't learn traditions by ourselves. None of us makes up a tradition by ourselves and keeps it going. It takes others. It takes a community. Now, someone may think up the tradition, but people connect to it. I think about my five years in Pullman, and every year I went to WSU football games. And one of the traditions there is between the first quarter and the second quarter, they sing the song, Back Home. We always find our way back home. And the entire crowd gets into it, and I'll be honest, it's something I'm gonna miss in college football this year. But WSU is doing their best to find a way, even though there will be no fans in the stadium, to keep this tradition going. Because it helps connect us to each other and to a place. We are taught traditions, even as if Tevye later says in Fiddler on the Roof, we don't know where our traditions start. There's a point when he's talking about the tradition of wearing a hat and keeping a belt, and someone says, you wonder where these traditions come from? He goes, I'll tell you. I don't know. But even if we don't know where traditions come from, they connect us together. We've probably all heard the old joke about a woman who gets married, and her husband asks for ham for dinner. And she gets the ham ready and she cuts off both sides of the ham and puts it in the pan. And her husband goes, why do you cut off both sides of the ham? She goes, well, it's tradition. We've always done it this way. But I don't know why. So then she calls her mother. Mom, how can we always cut off both ends of the ham before we put it in the pan? And her mom goes, well, it's tradition. We've always done it that way, but I don't know why. So then she calls her mother and says, Mom, how come we cut off both ends of the ham before we bake it? And her mother goes, it's tradition. And we do it because the first pan I had when I got married was too small to fit a full ham, so I had to cut off the sides to put it in there. Sometimes we don't know where our traditions come from, or maybe they start for mund mundane reasons, but they come, become traditions that we hand down. They become traditions that become important to us. This All Saints Day, I've been thinking about traditions. I think about those who taught us these traditions and light and in, or in the church and how we have grown to love these traditions. And I'm not talking just about the tradition of being at church, but the traditions of 
knowing what it means to follow Jesus and who Jesus is. These traditions are ancient. Some two, three, four, a thousand years old or more. The tradition of saying the Lord's Prayer and worship goes back to Jesus himself. Traditions of the church are not just some ancient task to complete. They connect us to those who taught us the faith. They connect us to God. That Tevye quote that I began with, because of our traditions, everyone knows who he is. And then Tevye goes on, and what God expects him to do. Those people who have come before me and taught me the traditions of my faith have helped me explore what God expects from me. From my little church in Kansas, from the Mennonite church, the Holderman Mennonite church that I went to vacation Bible school at, from visiting my grandfather's church in a small town called Spivey on Easter Sunday. I learned about the traditions of the church, but I learned what God expects from me. I think about my junior high Sunday school teacher who helped me explore the Sermon on the Mount and the Gospel of Matthew in new ways that still impact me today. I think about my father who drove the special education bus for our local school district, who taught me to see everyone as a, as a child of God regardless of any differences there may be. And I think about my grandfather who was one of the most kind, unassuming people you would have ever met, but who impacted my life in so many ways. And he impacted my life to see the role of the church and loving Jesus. You know, I don't have to remind you, but we all know this year has been different. And one of the biggest struggles in the church has been how do we honor those who have passed away? A few of our church members we've been able to have small grave sites for, but we have not been able to come together as a community and honor these individuals. Since last All Saints Day, last November 1st, 14 members of this community of faith have passed away, and we're going to honor them in a little while. But just since the beginning of COVID-19, seven of our members have passed away. And it's been difficult, not just for the family, but this community of faith who have loved these individuals and cared for them and learned from them not to be able to come together to honor and celebrate these people and who God was and is in their lives. But... You know, it's one thing to be able to come together and for a memorial service or a funeral. But what we can do is we can think about the lessons they've taught us. We can think about the ways they've taught us to love God, to love Jesus. I think about our mission statement here at Wesley to serve Christ, serve community, and serve creation. And I think about those who have passed away, who have done just that. Their partition, participation in Bible studies, in Sunday worship, and prayer. I think about how they've helped us serve the community by working on our rummage sale so that we have money to support the local community. How they maybe have spent time in the kitchen making sandwiches for Sandwich Sunday. Making, giving time to uh, put together baskets, Thanksgiving baskets for La Casa Hogar, and so many other ways that we do this work. And I think about the ways they participated in our recycling program, and how they were here when we put solar panels on our roof. Each of these people, and our own lives and the lives of the church who have passed away, have not just taught us what it means to be alive, 
but they teach us the traditions of what it means to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ, of what it means to love God with our whole being, our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. As I think about what it means to lose a loved one, I also think about the traditions and how I can honor them as they have taught me to love Jesus, that I can then show others that. I think a way to honor those who have passed away and have left us, to honor their name in front of God and each other, is to continue their work of serving Christ, serving community, and serving creation. To continue the things they've taught us and to let others know that I learned this from someone and I want to pass this on to you of why I love Jesus, of why I serve and care for others and the traditions of why I do what I do. Because if traditions did not impact us at the core of who we are, they wouldn't become traditions. We wouldn't pass them down to others. They would fade away. But many of the things we do here at Wesley and in the church and in our own lives have impacted us because they were taught to us by someone. They were taught to us, taught to us by the saints of our lives and the saints of our church. So as I think about how do we honor these individuals, I think that we are called to be living legacies of the lessons they've taught us. And more specifically, to love God as they taught us to do that. Amen. Let us remember who we are in Jesus. Beloved, wounded healers, saints set apart by God and for God. Let us remember our purpose, to lead a devoted life of compassion, generosity, justice, and hope, a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called, a life which inspires faith, faith to others, let us recommit ourselves to this life by first honoring the lives of those who have inspired us, the heroic and humble who ran the race before us, the martyrs who sacrificed for all the sake of Jesus, and especially those whom we have known and loved, who led us to Jesus and encouraged us to deeper faith and service. We remember Anita Tombleson, Cliff Griffin, Craig Hotchkiss, Marie Bergenson, Joanne Schwenk, Gary Campbell, Laverne Neal, Cindy Guib, Florence Mansky. Pat Hoff, Jean Sharpless, Ann Nelson, Larry Patrick, Danny Furman. 
we invite you in your own space to name out loud those who are saints in your own life who you lost this past year. From wherever you are worshiping, repeat after me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You surround us with witness after witness of your transforming love. Inspire us and empower us to persevere. Fill our hearts with courage. From wherever you are worshiping, repeat after me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You weep with us in our personal heartbreak and loss. We invite you to name out loud those to whom you are grieving. Comfort us and protect us in our mourning. Fill our souls with hope. You weep with us in communal heartbreak and loss. COVID, fires, storms, division, injustice, death. Comfort us and protect us in our mourning. Fill our souls with hope. From wherever you are worshiping, repeat after me. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You cry out in victory over sin and the grave. Raise us and release us to fulfill your calling, to be saints. Fill our lives with faithfulness and good works, honor and hope. In Jesus' name and all of his glory, Amen. I invite you to take an attitude of prayer. Together let us pray for those who are hurting and suffering. Lord, hear our prayer. Together let us pray for the joys of our lives. Lord, hear our prayers. Together let us pray for the community in which we live and serve. Lord, hear our prayers. Together, let us pray for the world, its people, and its leaders. Lord, hear our prayers. I invite you now to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to be in ministry here at Wesley United Methodist Church. Through our gifts to and our making of meals for Noah's Ark which we're making sandwiches for them, as they're not open right now, but we're making sandwiches that they can deliver to their homeless community, to Camp Hope, to Sunrise Outreach. We are continuing to be in ministry through AA and Al-Anon, providing them a space to meet, keeping our recycling center open so that we can care for God's creation as we recycle tin, aluminum, cardboard, and paper. We are so grateful that we have continued to be in ministry and to do the work which God has called us to do. And we thank you, those who have provided your financial support and your time and energy to do this work. You can share your financial gifts with us, your offerings and your tithes through the mail or through our website. And as we prepare for 2021, 
We invite you, if you have received a pledge card or you would like one, to contact the church office. As we are using these to prepare our budget for 2021, knowing that things will be different. But so we continue, can continue to find ways to serve Christ, serve community, and serve creation.